Oh, today we are going to go check on the 85, yes, 85 Cornish Cross meat chickens that we purchased the other day from Duncan's Poultry. Uh, we like going there. We buy all our uh, meat birds from there. It's a great place. You guys ought to check them out. They actually got a YouTube channel too. But I have never purchased or taken care of this many birds ever. And since we have this many birds, oh, the goats are hungry. We'll talk about that on another video. But since I've never taken care of this many birds, I couldn't put them in my traditional uh, brooder, like in the garage, because that many birds, they would stink the garage up like no one's business. And I didn't have anything large enough to put them in. So we put them in a hoop house that I usually house the, oh, I don't have to take this down. Uh, the birds usually, uh, the meat birds stay in there and stuff. But yeah, we've, uh, we're putting them in the hoop house and I've never done an outside brooder before. And this is kind of what it looks like. So for those who haven't been on the channel before, this is just a wooden frame, about 12 feet long. Uh, and then we took cattle panels and we stretched them over and then we tied them in with another board on the inside so they couldn't pop out. And then obviously I just put a tarp over it. Oh my gosh, these goats. Hey, keep it down, I'm trying to film. Yeah, okay, we hear you. Oh man. So what we did is we took another piece of cattle panel and we kind of just like made a wood frame here I put some boards on, they actually need to be replaced because they're kind of starting to rot out. Uh, covered in chicken wire, used a lot of zip ties, which helped out a lot. Hardware cloth, just whatever I had laying around. And uh, we're gonna call this Skid Row. Because of the tarp, so it kind of looks like Skid Row. Um, when I first built this, I did not put uh, chicken wire on the inside, like right now, you can see we got chicken wire on the inside. I don't know if you can see in there very well. We'll go in there in a second. And I had a raccoon able to get in uh, his paws and he was grabbing birds and just ripping them apart. Stop blowing holes in my ship! And the poor chicks were, they weren't chicks at that time, but they were small chickens. He was just ripping the wings off of them. It was a horrible thing. So, you know, when I did that, I uh, put all the chicken wire up and uh, then he decided to crawl up here and I didn't have this wire here. And what he did is he pushed his body, pushed this out, got in there, killed all the chickens. The first, uh, first batch of chickens I ever had, he killed them all. And he wasn't able to squeeze back through here to get the chickens out. So we put this uh, wire here, this board here, and then we use the bungee straps here to kind of keep this from being pushed out now uh, they should have a little bit more tension on them but we haven't gotten it yet uh we didn't have the electric fence back then either so needless to say it's been a learning experience uh using a hoop house to raise the chickens and keeping them safe now i did buy this uh this net it is not a poultry net and the way you could tell is the bottom squares here they are i think i turned this off they are very, uh, very large, so your chickens can go in and out of this. This is just mainly here right now, just to protect uh, uh, large animals like cats and raccoons from getting into my hoop house and killing my chickens. Then we're going to be changing it out once these loud mouths up here. What do you guys want? <coughs> we moved the goats up there to clear out all this brush and my poultry netting. Uh, about 325 feet of it. it's been strapped all through the wood so once we move the goats we're gonna swap this fence out we'll use this as a goat fence it's a little easier to work with because it's only 30 inches tall so ah uh, it's a real pleasure that stuff is uh i want to say it's 48 and man that stuff has some weight but let's go inside and check out the crib oh uh, so we just have little bungees here and this it just hinges like so, with the little carabiners that we have as a uh, hinge points, and they work out pretty good. Now we got ourselves a nice five gallon water because uh, 85 little baby chicks go through some food and water like you wouldn't believe. Now we learned last year that meat birds, particularly the ones I get, 
don't like eating out of that gravity feeder. They like eating out of a trough, but as chicks right now, they're gonna eat out of a gravity feeder. They're gonna be 24 hour fed, you know, we're not gonna be pulling feed, but once they get off the starter, I got two 50 pound bags. This is the first bag they've gone through. It's actually the chick starter. We'll go back and look at that. Uh, this is what they're gonna be eating until they get through their chick starter. Then we'll switch them, switch them over to the, the trough feeding. So last year, they weren't eating as aggressively as I wanted them to, and they weren't getting very big fast. And what uh, Matt up at Duncan said that they don't particularly like eating their crumble feed from a gravity feeder because it clumps together depending on what the humidity is like, and they have to work at it and get it up, and it doesn't naturally fall. So I make a point to come down here and shake this every day, obviously check on their water, so that doesn't happen again. Uh, but it's not going to be an issue once we get these guys out in the grass in the yard. Come on, come on. Let's go in the crib. Let's go in the crib. What's going on, guys? They are just loving it in here. Oh, yeah. Now, we, we aren't going to rotate this. This isn't like a chick shaw. This isn't something that you walk around with. This is going to be here. My grass is going to be gone here. We're gonna keep on putting down wood chips until they're finished out growing where they can survive outside. And then from there, they'll just be able to come in and out of here freely as they please. But, yep. Here's what Duncan gave us for uh, chick starter. And uh, two bags of that for 85 birds. All right, one thing I'm concerned about is I don't want chickens getting stuck behind here. Oh, we've got our first dead chick. All right. Well, got the three heat lamps. It is uh, about, I don't know, 87 right now. Today will be a high of 94. We're looking at to get 96 here um, later in the week. So I'll be shutting those lights off during the day with a timer, and then they'll be cycling back on at night. So this is a 150, this one right here is a black bulb, just a heating bulb, puts out some good heat. But it's fairly warm in here, so I might be cutting these things off just for today. It was cool last night, this is my first time coming down here today, so let's go shut these off. Now, we're down to 83 birds now. Um, typically, you're gonna have a die off out of 85 birds, only having two die uh, is not that bad. We've had these birds since last Wednesday. It's a Sunday now. Uh, 85 birds, four days. We've only had two. We only had two die off, so that's not a bad rate. When you get birds, you're going to have one or two die. Uh, the fact that I only have got two birds that have died so far out of 85 um, is, is not that bad. Last year, I think we purchased 50 and we had four, no, we had three die off out of the 50. So I do expect a couple more die off, but usually after the first week, you're not gonna have baby chicks die. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. God, I could have sworn I heard one of these things chirp. Um, he's not gonna chirp. Flies are already getting on him. This one sounds like he wanted to chirp. He is. Oh man. Tommy! Ah! Tommy! Well, maybe we can save this one. Let's try to get it some water. I can say I've never had that happen before. Usually when they're laying down like this, they're on their way out. So I'm pretty sure he's still gonna be on his way out. Well, I gotta worry about these other chickens getting out, so we're gonna take this one up to the garage and see what we can do. You know, chickens, they have, they have runts, and they just have, they have little chicks that just don't make it. So, 
Let's go up to the house and see if we can get this guy some cold water. If he puts his head back, he's trying to get water. See? There you go. I might have to... Yeah, see, there you go. There we go. Now, if you run into this, it's just the meat bird, but you know, it's still it's still life. Even though I, I intend on raising these things to eat, you know, I still want to be able to have a good survival rate and uh and nurse them back to health if something's wrong. That was weird though. I mean, seriously, I I tossed two birds out that I thought were completely dead. And then to hear that chirp in the background, I thought maybe it was a bird in the trees or something. And this little guy was sitting on the ground, obviously not moving. One had flies on it and the one didn't. So I just watched him. You guys saw it on film. And uh, he chirped again. That's weird. Next thing is, is I have to unload all these bags. And I got to put them all down in the shop where we can feed these chickens on a daily basis and keep this feed safe from any varmints. But, but it's much cheaper to buy everything in bulk uh, right when you get your chickens with this uh, Duncan poultry. So we buy everything all at once. So there's no running out of food or fighting to go get food. They've got food for the whole lifespan through the growth cycle before we send to processing. Yep, 50 pound bags, 17 of them. That's 12 pounds per chicken, I believe. The math is right. And uh, eight weeks. So let's get this stuff unloaded. Now I think this is roughly about 850 pounds of feed. So it'll be interesting to see what this uh, ranger squats down to. So I got about 100 pounds of feed in there right now. So it'll be interesting to see how far this ranger squats. So I'm gonna set you guys here and we'll see how far it squats down. I'd say she's squatting. <laughs> she's riding dirty. So guys, be sure to stay tuned to see how uh, raising 85 chickens in my front yard is gonna go. What is it gonna do to my yard? And uh, you guys, I'll keep you updated on Skid Row here and see how it goes. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you on the next episode. See you guys.